You never heard me on the radio or television or any other existing mediums complaining about how uh, the rise and fall of MC Hammer, MC Hammer, uh, he pissed it all off. Whatever, yeah. the, however you want, you know. It did hey, become hey, kind of a. Yeah, yeah. Like a that's, you were that's like all the we know. Xerox, yeah, right, right. right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and you never. Oh, you I, put, that guy pulled a hammer. Right. I, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And if what you, I did. It came like a. But it's true. It's true. No, but it's true. It's true. What, he was dancing? No, 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 no. So I was very aware of. And I just listened and I said, wow. Because there were two chain of thoughts for me. One is that. It's not like you don't really know. It wasn't no secret. Like, everybody knew that I had 200 employees. It wasn't no secret. So what you think? I was paying them in, uh, in, <laughs> in the hamburgers. So, uh, you know, you know, somebody was paying that payroll, and it wasn't falling. Front. So I was doing that. So if you wanted to now say the story is MC Hammer just pissed his money off when you knew that I was employing 200 people from my community, it said more about you than it did about me. So I didn't go on the radio to defend that. That because if you every now and then somebody would say after the sensational part of it, they said, you know, he took care of a lot of people. But anyway, we're going right next to the next commercial. So <laughs> yeah. so I said, wow, this is very interesting to me. So if a guy that, you know, in the middle of the crack era, when everybody was dying, machine guns everywhere, decided he wanted to try to to pull some guys out of that. If his fate is to be the guy who we're going to introduce for the next 14 years oh, is, hey, we're going to talk about MC Hammer next, how he pissed off 30 million. <laughs> Man, that's what you get for trying to contribute to the community. But the guy who might be known for uh, exploiting, uh, and, of course, we got our man right now with the hottest record in the world coming on next. He says every in the country needs to drop down now and, and suck here. Coming up next, our hero. I said, oh, so yeah, I, I need to let them do that. And I'm going somewhere else for a while because that fight I'm not fighting. That's a personal fight. That's your perspective on life, the world, and how you see things. I can't fight that. You got to have what you want. Some people love this. Some people love that. Never so, heard your perspective on that yeah, whole thing. You I, almost so I only story, heard other I ne- people's I never did. Story, yeah. I never did. I, did I, for Don't the first hire time. nobody. This is the first, <laughs> the first no. time on our dopey show. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm saying I never did it I, I, because I didn't yeah, need yeah. to. I, did I, people I, take advantage of you? People like take advantage of your loyalty, your good nature? They, they did take advantage of me because even if as you hear me speak and not to pat, pat myself on the back but you can see I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy yeah. so I, it's not like you was you know doing a shell game in front of me and I'm you know picking the wrong <laughs> piece or something Monty. three card Molly <laughs> no, no I just mean with 200 people it's a little it's a little it easier to hide loyal. stuff with that many people it's yeah. a different there's it's a, a loyalty but I also think it's not loyalty in this case I, per but se but look you're it. also on a, a really high level so when that level started to drop a little bit it made it tougher to take care of all these people. We just right? talk about revenue generation. It's not real complicated. Are you yeah. making enough money to sustain right. the business? Yeah, yeah. It's not, you know, it's not that. So, but from my perspective, it was loyalty, but it's. Just, I just want to do loyalty with the interpretation of it. We were dying. This is the mm. real thing. It's not fake. They, go and look at the murder rate in my city at the time. My city became very famous for being in the top three in homicides. That's where I live. That's where I grew up my entire life. I didn't grow up somewhere else. Some of the people that were dying were my classmates, my neighbors. So when I had the hammer thing, I would literally call home. I'd be on the road. I'd call home and somebody say, I say, hey, what John doing? What you mean what John doing? John dead. I said, what you mean John is dead? I just talked to him two weeks ago. He said, yeah, John dead and Sam killed him. I said, Sam lived two houses down from, from John killed him? Over what? Well, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I say, well, let me speak Let me speak to Sam then. Hey, Sam, man, check this out, man. Why? Well, blah, blah, blah. I said, why don't you come out here on the road with me, man? I can give you 30000 a year. I can't give you what you're making on the block. But, man, I can't have you keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you're killing the very cats we grew up with. Well, 10 turned to 20, 20 turned to 30. Huh. I'm cool with that. I was, I was cool with that because the amount of money that I was generating was worth the lives to me. Now, in retrospect, for the sake of story, I always say, Hammer, if you had it to do it all over again, wouldn't you? Come on, Hammer, just say you you kept some of that money. I say, yeah, you know, if I had to do it all over again, I would absolutely, you know, put some of that money in the bank and all that. But the real truth is, not in exchange for the lives that lived, I I wouldn't do it. I always knew that I could generate money. I had my first job at eight 
at nine. It's very documented. You can go to my Twitter right now and pull up a picture of me and Hank Aaron. It says the two hammers finally meet. Know what the date of the picture, picture says? 1975. Yeah, I've seen that. In 1975, I was already in my third year of a job. I'm a, I've been an entrepreneur from day one, so I, I'm, not, I'm not ever concerned about generating money, but I got caught up in my humanity. So. So, mm. Just to summarize, you, words, just to summarize, you decided to go down with the ship. Yeah, I, you, you didn't I have made to go the down with the ship. I didn't have to. They pulled me. You could have let those guys. You should have told die. thirty guys with shiny pants. Right, right. right. Get out. That is, is that's <laughs> probably very Make, true. You see but, that move we did last show? Do that right out there. <laughs> keep going. Yeah, they got, yeah. Keep going with that. When we get the running man to the left, <laughs> just don't come back. Do that tippy toe move to the left and keep doing it. Someone hold the door for you. Dance left until you hit water. <laughs> hey, keep going, right? <laughs> but I, loyalty. Uh, there's something uh, else that has to be said. Uh, I think you also were, were taking a gamble, too. Like, all right, I see that this thing is, is sinking, but I'm just I'm just one song away from bringing this whole damn thing right back up. As if you were in my brain. Right? I, I absolutely felt that way. I, I, I felt yeah, like... Because you're way too smart to just watch it No, like, I, sink. I, I actually did The whole think time that. you were probably thinking, all right, one it's more take one song, one of this, We go that. right back out in the road. I generate more money, and everything is cool. Well, it didn't happen like that. So that was the difference between, mm -hmm. you know, being able to sustain it long enough for, between hits because I made a decision... That was the craziest thing from a business perspective, probably in the history of touring. When we come off the road, what are you guys going to do? Well, you know, I heard the mumbling. What you mean? What you, what you think we're going to do? We're going to go get some of these keys and get to work. <laughs> Keep it moving. I was like. <laughs> were you worried? Were these guys around you? Yeah, well, yeah, they was around me. But I'm, no, but I'm saying the dudes no, worried that, about the, guys. the gangsters that, that you had you. around yeah. you, did that make you a little nervous? Well, no, because. I'm I'm kind of you know you know I, I know how to switch my hats man so well you know hammered, it, it, hammered means something else than we always started man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I know I, I know uh -oh. I'm, I, I ain't uh -oh. never I I never had a problem with that okay. ever 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 so all right. we all grew up in the, the same way you ended up with that mentality I ended up but I decided not to access it, it the, right. uh, immediately when I'm angry it's not my first option right. so 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 but I made the decision you know I was like man you know. When we off the road, no, I don't do that because, one, we back in the same hole again. I, I, I ain't got time for these funerals. I'm tired of it. I'm not doing it. So I'm going to keep y'all on the payroll even Jesus. when we not on the road. That's so expensive. I paid the same amount of money when I was off the road as I did when I was on. It was a very conscious decision, and it was, in hindsight, from, from many perspectives, you would say, man, you shouldn't have did that. And, again, I wrestle with it. Uh, I'm going to wrestle with it for the rest of my life. My conclusion is, nah. I'll take life, and it, and thank God it all turned out okay yeah. from an economic standpoint. But historically, the story will probably never be uh, it'll told away. Be, right, it'll never right, be told right. that way. This will probably be the last time it's told <laughs> that way. But everybody who was there and who know about it know every word that I'm saying it to you. You come to my studio, you'll see 60 new cars out there. They all belong to my employees and my dancers. I co-signed for everybody because they go down to the bank, Jeez. and they couldn't qualify for a car. And I thought that was very insulting. So I would say, you know what, what do you mean they can't? They work for me, they got a job. Well, this is their first bit of credit. Oh, so you want to insult, you want to insult people. Okay, no problem. Send it over to me, I'm co-signing. Well, I ain't up co-signing for 60 cars. Oh. Okay. So I, I was like, but you, I, I want to create a middle class right now among the people who work for me to, sell, to show that we don't only have to hustle hard. We don't only have to sell dope. We don't only have to bring these machine guns to you to make this money. So that was my dilemma. And that's why I ended up going down with the ship because I hope that one more hit, we can keep it going, yeah. but we didn't get to one more hit. So I got the hit. It was called bankruptcy. And I, and that's why you never heard me complain. He you, went, I, you, I, I, you took, I took you the took hit them, and took the hits. You yeah. took them from zero to 60. That's what the issue is. Like you can't just take somebody from a certain, cause I got friends where I'm like, Hey man, instead of going to Atlanta for whatever you're going to do, Let's save up your money. Let's go to Melbourne, Australia. And it's like, what? what you so if I just took them to Melbourne, Australia, that would be not smart. Yeah, I would yeah, have yeah. to teach them somehow to want to go to Melbourne. Right. He just he gave them stuff. And, 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 and what, it, what they did is just hammers giving us stuff. I crippled some people. Uh -huh. I did. I did. Some people... Some people I crippled because some guys never wanted to work again. No, seriously. Some of my guys were like, like seven years later, five years later after bankruptcy. 
Hey, what you doing? She I'm waiting for you. Yeah, wait for you to get it on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, come on, you can't be you. you. Man, shoot, we waiting for that next hit. Hey, man, that was you know that was five years ago, dog. And you had to. It's all right, man. I'm all right. I'm a whole on. And well, well, eight years later, yeah. waiting for that next hammer oh, hit. So man. I crippled some cats. How you much know? pressure did that put on you when you were writing? Because now all of a sudden you're writing to sustain a financial empire instead of just as an artist. Uh, How that's, much? that's well said. Uh, man, that's well said. So yeah, at some point we're really smart, Hammer. Yeah, you guys, you know, you, you should do. <laughs> you guys should actually try to like get on the radio or something. Man. <laughs> you guys, pretty, James, these mics are you guys, you're, you're pretty smart. As, I'm, I, and I didn't mean to cut. But, the, but you're, it was such a you know dead on point statement. Um, it, it all changed because, it, it, as you know, I write from a very joyous, dancing, uh, reflective position. That's the other thing. Without digressing too far, for every dance record I made, I made a record dealing with issues. The issue records are never big as the dance records. But I say we got to pray, help the children. When we living in a world like this, why can't we live together? So I always balanced them all. But at, by the time I got to the funky headhunter. One is I was tired of cats who wouldn't want to see the other hammer on no day in their life under any circumstance, physical, choose your choice of weapons, whatever it is that you, you, you engage another man with, you wouldn't want a piece of me under no circumstances. Mm making records where they get to say my name or, you know, stuff like that. I, you know, I, I ain't never been that cat. And, and so, you know, uh, uh, I made a record that I wouldn't have normally made mm -hmm. and addressed some of those issues, and I wrote from the perspective of what you just said. One, we need a big hit, and two, I want some heads. 